friends, my name is Felipe and today I'm bringing here in this video a little overview on DaVinci Resolve 18 for iPad. This version of Resolve is a beta version at the moment, so I'm just testing and it is running on my 2018 iPad Pro 11 inches on my M1 iPad Pro and for sure them two will be running as well, of course. But I am very surprised that it's running on the 2018 uh, version of the iPad. It's not as fast, obviously, but pretty interesting. And I don't know if it's going to be the same case when it's released. But let's take a look on DaVinci Resolve. Uh, let's open here. Uh, of course, this is not the first time I'm opening the, the application. So here it is, uh, the, the project from my last video about Whisper. Uh, if you don't know, Whisper is the uh, artificial intelligence algorithm for transcription. But basically, I got this project here from Final Cut and I brought it into DaVinci. If you want to collaborate and donate any money, there is the link down below. So let's get into the video. I'm going to show you how to install and execute Whisper from OpenAI. Now, one thing here that's interesting about this video, two things, of course, there is the title, the special title from Motion that doesn't come through, of course, that's, ex that's to be expected. Second thing is, if I come here to the inspector and take a look at this video, this is an 8K video from the Sony A1 in HEVC at 2997, and it's playing well. Whisper. Does transcription and translation from... And just as I said that it's playing well with the inspector open, it starts not playing that well, right? So let me remove this here and take a look how it plays without the title. Other languages to English. The translations are not great, but the transcriptions are absolutely excellent. Yeah, it plays really well. Uh, above here, I have actually the option to either disable proxies, prefer proxies or prefer camera originals. I'm in camera originals but I can select proxies. My proxies are already linked here. And as expected, uh, and there is the other way to execute this. It plays really well. Now let's start taking a look here at the media side. Uh, the first thing that you will need to know is when you're trying to import some media, you can import from folders, from, for example, an external SSD, you can import from your photos, and there is this other option here, import media, in case you want to import file by file. Now, for you to be able to import from a folder, first of all, you're gonna need to come to the preferences and then to path mapping. And then on the path mapping, you need to add the folder from which you want to import media. So if I come here and add, uh, and I'm gonna choose here an external drive, if I find it. Here it is, VG8 Media, and I want, for example, this high resolution um, folder here. I add it here on my paths, save. Now I can actually come to import, import folder. I'm gonna choose now the same folder, this one, and open. And now this is going to bring me all the folder structure and all of the, the, the media that's inside. So for example, this is the media here. It's an archive media for a documentary. And let's go back now to my master bin. So this is the way that you're gonna need to do in order to import some media. Now, if I take a look at the media, for example, this is just audio. I have my inspector up here. I can take a look at everything. I can set clip color if it's a good take. In, in, in a lot of ways, this is the, the full version of DaVinci, but just with the cut page and the color page. All right, so let's see what else we can take a look here in masters. I will go into my Sony A1. Here I have also the view to take a look at metadata. So in case someone uses this view, it's available here. Uh, I can organize everything here by scene, date modified, online status, a lot of interesting options. I can take a look at this in thumbnail view and I can look at this in list view. One thing that I have not tried to do is to look for, for example, .mov and say, okay, all fields, not only all fields, but I want to look inside all bins. 
Is that an option? Because that's something that I tend to use quite a bit. Yeah, I don't file name. Yeah, it's not looking inside every bin. It's only looking inside the bin that I have selected. So I think this would be, um, I think, a feedback for, for Blackmagic to add that option to look inside all the bins uh, to do that search. Because this way I can, for example, look at all MOVs and see the thumbnails of all of them at the same time without having to put them all in one bin, for example. All right, uh, what else can we do here? Yeah, one thing that's a little annoying, for example, if we take a look at this video that I have here, is that I have actually music playing in the background. Hi. And even though I have that music there, there is no way for me to take a look at that music because it only shows me uh, video tracks from V1 and above. It doesn't show me the audio tracks that are associated below. So that kind of, I don't think the, you're gonna use this DaVinci to edit something complicated per se. So if I come here to music, for example, and I want to bring that music above, oh well, I can't, but I probably added... Hi, I'm here to save you a lot. No, yeah, it didn't go anywhere. So if I try that again, let me try opening it here. And is there a button to put it into the timeline? I don't think there is. Okay, let's just try that again. Oh, it doesn't go through. So I, I don't think this is gonna be super useful for editing or finishing a whole video. On the other hand, uh, the color page is much more full. Now, a, a couple of other things that I wanna show here. There is no way for you to have the media uh, window open at the same time as the inspector. When you click in one, the other one will go away. And this is probably a little obvious because of the real estate that we have on the screen, right? And we have here all the options or most of the options that you would expect from DaVinci, ah, including voice isolation that I have never used from DaVinci. The cute is, which is through terminal. Well, I, I don't need to use right now, so. <laughs> But if I wanted to use, I think I could just switch on. That is the way that's going to work on M1 now. All right, I'm going to switch that back off. Uh, what else can we take a look here? We, If I come back to the media, I can actually resize the viewer up to a point. So I still need to scroll quite a bit here on the horizontal, on the media pool, on the media, yeah, on the media pool to take a look at details about my media, but I think that's okay. Uh, the other place that you can use to change sizes is this hamburger option here. So you can get your viewer to this size, which is funny. If it gets to this size, why couldn't you open inspector and media at the same time, right? I would really like to open the inspector in the media at the same time. And if the viewer can have the video in just that size, I think you could have the same by having this two open, right? But really, this is version one, it's still a beta, and this is pretty impressive with what they were able to accomplish here. Um, it's very responsive. The reason, well, it, it, it did take a little while there for, for it to I, respond. This version, it, yeah. Version is not working on M1 computers. Is that on? Yeah, it takes a little while for it to react, right? L take a look at this. Doing shell script exactly the same way as the Intel Max or something like that. They are not looking. And this is an HAVC 1080p proxy of the original 8K. Of course, if we take a look at the 8K version. A to execute this on Intel. Funny enough, it responds uh, even faster to than the proxy. To execute this, which is through terminal, that is the way that's gonna work on M1 Max. The reason why. The okay, you're not gonna be editing 8K very frequently here, I hope, more, I think, I don't know. Uh, one other thing worth noticing here is that 
this project itself is set to 8K, if I'm not mistaken. I don't even know how to take a look at that. Uh, the multicam is 8K and the project itself. See, I'm, I'm, I don't really like this thing of selecting something here on this side and having to go to inspector to take a look at it. But let's see if we can take a look at timeline settings. Timeline settings, yeah, this is an 8K timeline, right? So I, th I think I'm exaggerating a little bit here. So now let's take a look at the color page. Color page seems to be very fully <laughs> done here. Uh, we can put the viewer on full screen with command F. We can do, I think there is a shift F option. Yes, there is a shift F here. Uh, I can add serial nodes and I can organize this here. I can also right click or long click and I can give it a, a name. Contrast, for example, all the tools seem to be here. Uh, so we have the camera settings. We have our primary color wheels. We have the HDR color wheels. We have curves. We have our hue saturation here. And we have quite a lot of options that we can do here on this color page. And um, just as, let me get the other one here. That's the one that I know how to use. It's very responsive. And then I can do command D to switch off and on. And well, I am not a colorist. And here you can also take grab stills. You can create a, your still store here. But again, I am not a colorist. And this page here is not something that I am very, that I use very frequently. But look at this, you have everything that you can possibly need here. And this is fabulous. So I'm planning on doing a live stream in which we can take a look at this together. You can send me suggestions of what it is that you want me to do and I'll do it. Uh, so stay tuned for that. This was just a quick look on DaVinci Resolve 18 for the iPad. Edit page, color page, almost fully featured there. And uh, the only thing that I wasn't able to do it was to open a very big project, a very big documentary project on it, which is to be expected since the iPad doesn't really have a lot of RAM. This is something that you really want a lot of RAM on big projects. But from what I can see here, uh, you could be creating remote grades, you can be creating LUTs, you can be creating looks, working on that on the go, you can be organizing a project. Um, so there is some use there and I'm definitely looking forward to see what else Blackmagic will be able to add to DaVinci on the iPad. And of course, now the question is, where is Final Cut? So hope you liked this video and I see you on the next one.